Hi guys, welcome back. Right, as you see, I've just turned this one and I've done it. Um, as I say, it's not a finish on it. Um, it is so wet. So I've left that to do that, leave it to dry up a bit, and then I'll come back to that one and see what it does. I wanted to test that because, see, this here, ugh, this lump here is the piece that I'm going to be making a fruit bowl out of that um, Barry and Peter Raven have given to me. But again, as you can see on this end grate, it is so wet. And I don't want it to spoil. So I think what I'm going to have to do is probably do a two-part video, do a first turn, turn it thin enough, and then leave it for a while. And it might be a month or two before I can get back to it, or a couple of months even, it's depending on how it dries out. I don't know. I don't want to dry it too fast and, and have it cracking. So... Um, that's what I'm going to have to do, guys. I know, really, I should just leave that for a while, but I don't want to take the chance on it cracking. So, but, see, at the moment, because this wood is so wet, and I know you guys, you'll say, but I could microwave it, I can do lots of this. I'm not sticking it in a microwave. It's, it's so wet, I can't put any finish, I can't sand it, I can't wax it. You can see, look, as soon as you rub your hand on it, it, it marks up. Um, it's like on the inside. There's no torn grain. There's no torn grain. Um, it's not so much tall, it's where you try the, the wet is building up on the back of the chisel and it's it's rubbing it and it's so wet that's soaking wet there and soaking wet there so until I can let it dry a bit then I can do a finish on it and get a finished cut so right I'm going to turn this this is another piece this is the same Barry and uh, Peter gave gave this to me these are lengths and I've done it down I'm going to do like a I think I'm going to do a goblet out of it Something like that, I think. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that with, probably with a carbide or something. I don't know. I'm just going to have a little play. Okay. So, this isn't quite as wet. It is the same wood, but this isn't as wet as what that, that is. So, this is, seems a bit better. Right, so I'm going to start up. Step over here. Sorry if I'm talking a bit loud again, guys. I know if I talk loud, it makes the... So, I'm going to turn my speed up. Right, I'm back up to my more comfortable turning speed, for me of 2,508, okay, right, um, I'm going to use a, a square carbide to take this down first, okay, and I'm going to be just taking some cuts like this. Now, I would normally do this, let's say, just with a roughing gouge, but I just put for a change. Now, I know a lot of you would, if you're using the, the carbide, you'd come in and do it this way. Well, you'd do it this way, okay? Which is fine if that's what you want to do. To me, if you're going to come in that way, drop the handle and come in like this and do it. Okay, you'll get a lot better cut, and it's a lot, a lot kinder on you and kinder on the tool. Okay, that's nice there. Right, um, we're going to carry on and do that a little bit. Well, I'm already round down this end, so for me, I, I like to roll it over and come across. If you get in the habit of doing that then you'll always do it right now then I'm going to put this in my uh, ripple jaws here my shark jaws okay now I know they are Closed, I think it's 50 mil. I could never remember because I don't normally measure. Um, no, they're 45 actually closed. I'm going to do 50 mil tenon on here. But what I'm going to do, and I'm going to measure this one because. Whoops.
I'm not having a lot of luck here. I've got a tape measure on here I could use, but you can't see it. Right, let's put it down. Right, okay, I'm going to go for sort of 50 mil. I don't want it... Right, just it's just over 50 mil. That's going to be fine. Right, and that will then... Yep, that hold in there nice. Reason I'm using those jaws, because I'm doing a goblet, and it's going to be... Sorry, I'm shouting again. I'm you have to shout at me, guys, and say, shut up a bit. Because I'm doing a goblet... Um, right, there you go. I've got my mark there now. I'm going to have a bit sticking out the jaw. So what I want to do is, because I've got the deck on here, I want to make quite a big tenon. Okay? And this will just be a straight one. No dovetail needed. I'm going to go for about that big. I want it nice and clean like that. That's it. That's what I'm going to how I'm going to hold it. Because I can do that because those jaws allow it. They allow me to give that, that big hold in there. Okay. Maximum support. I'll take this off while I'm doing it. Yeah, as I said, there's there's nothing wrong if you want to use um, the script. I like to roll it over. Gives the, the best fit. Well, I mean, you can see the finish that we've got on that. We've got no tear out. Look, we've got a lovely finish. And this is wet wood as well. It's it's not really wet, but it's it's still still fairly wet. Um, yeah, as I say, if you come in just flat as slight like scraping, then I mean, carbide actually, people call them carbide scrapers, but they're absolute rubbish at scraping. They really are. They're not scrapers, as you would know. If you're wood to, you'll know a scraper has a burr. You raise a burr on a scraper. A carbide does not have a burr. So it actually makes... I'll oh, look at that. I'm not bottoming out. I've got about oh, an eighth to a sixteenth, about a sixteenth of an inch gap at the back there. Okay, to you and me, like two mil, three mil, so like about two mil in English. <laughs> Right, and I can tighten down nice on that. Now I know I've got that real solid because I'm going to hollow the end, don't I? So, yeah, they make absolute crap scrapers, carbide. That's why you get so much terror because they don't have a burr. They're cutters. If you Google it, you put in uh, carbide scraper inserts, you won't find nothing. They are carbide inserts, carbide cutters, or carbide knives insert knives they call them a lot of it and blades they're never called a scraper because they're not scrapers they're absolutely crap at scraping so there you go there's a little fact for you that's why you get a bad finish when you scrape with it you'll never get a good it's just that people have portrayed them as carbide scrapers to make them sound so easy to use to fool people into going and buying them Right, okay, I'm going to hollow this bit first because obviously it's being its um, goblet, then I want to hollow it out first, okay? Everything's nice and true. Right, and for this I'm going to use my 9mm, sorry, that's the wrong tool. My 9mm on the spindle, on the round bar, just for a change. going to get a little bit of vibration there because we're end grain and we're quite a way out from the chuck. Get out, can you move out of my way please? So rest, thank you.
Still grab there because I rolled it that way a bit. Okay, we've got to get this bottom flat in here. I don't know how deep I want to go, really. It's a goblet, so it's not going to be that deep, is it? Probably be about deep enough. Right. Dimple, dimple in the middle. I think I'm a bit high. Tiny bit high. Because I'm getting a dimple in the middle, see? That's it, it's gone. That's better. Oh, oh. I just thought of something. Actually, more that clip on light won't actually work on my tool rest, will it? Because I don't have it that high. Hmm. Didn't think of that. I ain't used that yet. Right. Let's just get this here. I've got a little bump just there I'm trying to get rid of. I can't see it, see? I've got no light. Let me put, I'm gonna just try uh you could do. I just want to see what this goes like. So right. This is the one I bought guys from uh from Newark. Okay, the idea being it can go on your tool if you want, but it, it magnet and it goes on have you zoomed out sorry darling yeah so I don't right as I say from where my tool rest is I can't really clip it on here for it to go in but right I've got a power supply here on my lathe get a nice long cable which is nice Nice long cable, okay. Oh, very bright, look at that. So I'm going to chuck that down there, bring that round there. And, well, that's going to be right in my eyes. That is a bit bright. Now, the idea is it would go on here like so. And that would be there it's not too far away i could get away with that i suppose but there we go now i'll be able to see what i'm actually doing so let's see now i can see i'm actually a little bit no i'm not going to lower it because that moved that away again wasn't it See, now I can see what I'm doing. I've got to get that mark out. I keep putting it back there. 
So I'm going to come up on the top then. I've got every, I'm touching this, I'm touching that. I'm not getting rid of it. Right, okay, let's come up here. So I've still got more to take out yet anyway. There we go. Right, that got that bit done. I've got to come across this bottom again. Yep, get in there. My hand keeps going. There we go, right. We're up to there. I've got a little mark there. So what I'm going to do, I know this is end grain. And a little stuff. I keep getting a. There's something causing me to bump there. That's annoying me now. There. Get all the dust out of there. And there we go. Now we've got a clean finish. And that's with the detail chisel. See, that's what you can do with a detail chisel. Okay. And all that is now, that's the grain that's swirling around in there. Okay. So, we'll bring that back there. And what I'll do, I'm going to... Actually, let me, let me finish that front. I'm going to move that light over there for the moment. It's out, out of the way because... I'm doing the front of it. I'm going to stay with the detail actually for this front. Actually, you can put that. Oh, you've got it like well, it's on. Right there, and I'm going to just chamfer around that. There we go. Right now, I can come in. I can shape the outside of that. But first, before I do that, I'm going to do a little little sand in there. See, where there's a wheel, there's a way. I couldn't, I just wasn't getting it with that 9mm. As I was coming out, I think because the wood being, well, I can't really blame the wood. I just wasn't getting it. My, I think I was getting a little bit of movement on my hand, so it's causing me to put a line in it every time. So, I went with a detail chisel and took a push cut down it, which I wouldn't recommend doing with any of the other tools, really, but the detail can do it. There we go. Nice. Okay. That's all right. Now I'm going to turn that off. Yeah, no, I'm quite pleased with that, actually. I'll have to try that again on some other things. Quite pleased with that light. Yeah, that was all right. Well, this is all outside work now, so that can go off. You click it twice. Yep, that's it. Right, okay. So let me get my... And we'll see what we're going to do here. We're going to start now to turn this into a goblet. I might put a, a soft touch in there, actually, to hold it, because I'm going to be turning that down, and I? So let me get a... No, I've got one here. This one here can go on to that. Goes on to that. That's it. And if I put a bit of matting over the end of it, let's turn that off. I'm not going to want all that flapping about, am I? I must have a smaller bit here somewhere. 
No, right, okay, I'll tear a bit off of this. I don't want it all flapping about on me. That's it, that's going to be alright. There you go, that'll give me a bit... Right, oh, before I do that, I'll take the depth. I'll get a little depth from that. Right, so I want to come in from there. Get a pencil, it works. There we go. Now just give me a bit of support there. Yep, that's all good. Right, we'll go back to the 9mm round for now. Oh, sorry. No, you're all right. Go on. You know, a little bit. I think it's this wet on the tool rest. Is it's I'm sticking to it a little bit. That's it. There, just blend that bit there. Oh, don't do that. There we go, that blended. Tiny like, little one there. There we go, right, all good. That should be our top bit done.
Just get there, get off. You come right round there if you want. Yeah. Send a little bead in the bottom. Can you pass me my detail chisel that's behind you? I saw I've got it, I've got it, I've done it. Oh, well, that's all nice there. Eh? Mm -hmm. Right. Actually, what I'm going to do, just for a second.
sort of stand there. I do. I, I've turned it quite thin in there, so I didn't want it to go wobble, 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 wobble. Because that's what they do. They go wobble, 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 wobble. Sorry? Yeah, nice. Yeah, it's got some nice grain on that. All I'll have to do is sand up that bottom on that. Yeah, I'll do a, a little sand up on the bottom, but there we go, guys. There's a little... Uh, take this off. Hang on. There we go, guys. There's a little... Uh, I can talk like that. I can whisper. You should probably still be able to hear me. That's rather beautiful, actually. There we go. And that was thank you to the. I've got to sand that bottom. I've got a little little knob there. I've just got to sand that off. I haven't done it yet. So as you see, I've just parted. Oh, look at that. That's what I was getting confused because I've got that swelly grain in that inside there. And look, it's it's actually here on the outside. Look at that. See that swell? What a beautiful, beautiful patterning. What a beautiful grain that has got. Just got my dusty fingers all over it. Just get a little. There, so a little goblet, guys. And look at that. Look at that grain patterns on that. Oh, that's beautiful. So that's thank you to Barry and Peter Raven for that piece of wood. Very nice. I've got another piece over there as well because I was actually my plan was I was going to turn turn that one with the skew on the outside and hollow it, and I was going to do one with a carbide. But I went straight in and done it with a carbide. Look at that, all carbide, carbide guys. <laughs> well, they can only scrape, can't they? they? Can only scrape. Well, yeah. There you go. You keep scraping, mate, and leave us to do the turning. There we go. Look at that. How beautiful is that? What beautiful grain. Okay, and that's all in the inside. I was thinking that was like, I was trying to get rid of that on the inside, but it's not. It's the actual swell. It's the actual grain. Oh, yeah. The actual grain is doing that swelling round. That is beautiful, that is. I really like that. Yeah. Right, anyway, there we go, guys. All turned with carbide. There you go. You saw it right here. There are the three carbides. Okay, detail, square, and nine mil round. I'll use the spindle turning ones this time. Um, on the round bar because I was just totally rolling over and doing all the that turns and stuff. And like I say, if you come in and use your square like a skew, you can get that lovely finish on the outside and you can actually follow that curve right round. So there you go. Right. To the pip, guys. Cheers. <laughs> Bye, guys.